SMC 64 machine down in the falls, which has been a very re reliable machine. Um, we've had it for about 13 years. Um, it's starting to get tired. It's got you know a lot of hours on it now. So when we were, were looking for new equipment, you know we we basically narrowed it down to four different suppliers um, based off of just test cuts and, and uh, footprint size, working envelope, um, cost, things like that. And um, the Makino seemed like a real good fit for us and we started with the, the graphite machine and you know, the controller and, and everything else on there. So we had a lot of tribal knowledge and, and, and growth through that and um, the, the V33i mill machine, they're, they're a great fit, a great fit for us. Starts with the size, horsepower, accuracy, spindle speed, so we, we understand our needs and we get it down to uh, a group of uh, machines that we want to look at. And when we get that far, uh, we'll assign a team of MGS personnel to, to be in charge of uh, evaluating the, the manufacturer. And we'll go out and we will get um, test cuts, of course, are the most simple thing that you would do. But we'll analyze the, the, uh, the serviceability locally for us. Uh, that is always a key. When we got our first V33i, we certainly went out to the, the market. And I would guess we had maybe as far as, I think, five different test cuts that we did. And, and our, our guys do a bunch of step cuts and round cuts and all this um, accuracy uh, needs that we have. And, and of course, Makino was able to do very well in that. Um, and we carried over the testing to uh, use that to evaluate the V33Is that we purchased for the steel. The, um, the fact that the, the serviceability has not been an issue over the last decade plus is a major reason also why we purchased those machines. We had the confidence that they would not be down, which is very expensive, or paying for just the repair itself, which is very expensive. The serviceability has been really uh, among the best of any machine we have. The more difficult projects that have the uh, high accuracy needs will go through the machines. You know, our goal too is to basically get more work done with the same amount of people, not the same amount of work done with less people. It's kind of our goal for automation. So that's why there's a lot of automation, um, proving things out and then running lights out on, at night and on the weekend. I would say on average, the, between the graphite and the steel, obviously it depends on workload, but our, our goal is to run 17 hours a day cutting time seven days a week. We get a lot more done and that's and that's always been the philosophy of mold makers or MGS in general. Even back when I started here 23 years ago we were one of the only shops that had tool changing EDMs which were just kind of coming out. You know a lot of back in the day a lot of the shops just you know they were, they were doing it in mills. High speed milling wasn't really around yet. Um, nobody was doing it in graphite graphite was going to be hand loaded with a 3R. So then we started with the, you know, in the EDM and then just kind of, we, we got robots in our EDM, got rid of the tool changes on our EDM and put robots in there and then I'm like, well, why can't we do this with graphite for cutting? Right. It's the same, it's the same philosophy, it's just turned upside down. Almost all the time, we'll hard mill as much as we can because we find it's more accurate than EDMing. Um, you can take out one step out of, out of the process because you don't have any, have to worry about any variables in the graphite and in the EDMing process. So what we will do is we'll, we'll mill as much as we can and we'll still go and EDM where we have to, but then we'll, we'll use the hard milling surface to, as a gauge to check our EDM burn. There's times, unfortunately, where we have to do EDMing on a job where you could actually just cut it because of the EDM finish that the customer requires. So, but the, um, the accuracy of, out of the hard cutting has been it, it's it's very very close, very consistent. We look for consistency, and we want it to be close. But even if it's out, let's just say it's out a half a thousandth, we're looking for them all to be out a half a thousandth, and then we'd all be consistent. Okay. And 
right now are the, the 33s are, are doing, a, doing a great job of that. We push it more and more. We try different things, knowing just the, the hard milling process in general. And that's why we go with the, the higher RPM spindle on some of the stuff. I mean, like a lot of the machines only come with a 20K spindle. We want to go to the 30K spindle on the steel machine so that we can cut some smaller detail with, a, with smaller cutters versus EDMing. Because we're a job shop, we need yeah. to be diverse. We can't just go right into the nano slash micro machining because we're going to need that general purpose machine for other jobs. And the V33 does seem to kind of do both. They're holding stuff under a half a thousandth, and it's consistent once they get it dialed in so we can make adjustments from there. And if they have to, with certain cutters and different techniques, we can even get it closer than that. But on everyday stuff, we can easily hit 